more time. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Thank so, you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some are taking credit. Um, so we're, we're in Proverbs. We've got our, we've got our kiddos today. We'll give them a, a little project here in just a second. Okay. Um, tell, I'm not as nervous today. We're not, we're not talking about money in the same way. <laughs> so uh, we are going to look at uh, money in just a little bit of a different uh, aspect, as it were. Um, so we're, we're in Proverbs, and uh, we'll start with uh, Proverbs 14. But before you, before you flip there, I do want to just look over one more time Proverbs <coughs> chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Again, you guys know verse 5 and 6, one of the most famous verses in all, okay, in all of Scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. We we looked last week at just how we are to honor the Lord with our finances. We're to honor the Lord because He deserves the first fruits. That means the, the first portion of the check, right? Not not the, the leftovers. And I just wanted to look just wanted to talk about a couple of things that have uh, been very convicting for me over, over the last several years. Um, the first is we, we want to give to the Lord to the local church body. Okay? I wanted to just emphasize this again. I'm not as nervous today, okay? <laughs> but we want to give to the, the local church body, and why? Why is that, okay? Several reasons, which, is, which are very much scriptural. Um, the, the biggest thing is so that you guys, in, in a more practical sense, you're contributing, obviously, to, to my salary, but back in the, the day, you'd be giving to the Israelites and the, specifically the Levites who would help with the worship. Okay, they would help lead the, 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 the people of Israel in worship and growing in the knowledge of Christ. So in a very practical sense, I, I hope to do a good job with that. But also so we train up other men that want to do that as well. Okay, Not that they're going to be pastors, but that they know how to handle the word of God. We also want to give locally to the church, the local church body, because, and again in a very practical sense, if we can, if we can go to the next slide here. Uh, i got some, some Bible verses here. Okay, If you look at those in the Old Testament... In a very literal sense, God wants us to contribute to the local church body so that the building is maintained and people can come and hear the word of God. Okay? From all ages. And okay, <laughs> and we see that uh, in, in Chronicles, two separate kings, two separate instances, they, they found out that, wow, we're way off track. And one of the ways they knew they were spiritually off track is they looked at the local, the local temple and it was, it was horrible. They needed repairs. We have disregarded the Lord, and it was seen in how they treated their building. You guys see that? There's a parallel, right? We don't want to grow in Christ. What a shock. The building can sometimes look like trash, right? Then there's other ways. As we saw from Nehemiah, the wall was literally down. There was no protection. There was no spiritual growth, no spiritual protection. And so, Nehemiah, we need to build this literally because it's what God would want us to do. And what a shock, it was built in 52 days, okay? So in a very literal sense, you're not only help, you know, providing for the local pastor, whether it's me or not, but you're helping maintain the facilities God has blessed you with. And for us, you know, Wednesdays, there's a lot of feet and foot traffic. That means that we need to keep it up if we want more and more people to hear the word of God. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing, okay? And again, you see on the screen, one of the most important things is that ownership, Ownership, right? If we don't contribute, do we really care about what's going to happen to it? Probably not, right? I noticed that when we buy a car, man, we take care of that car. I was, I I'm talking, 2019, Tanya and I are like, you know, our other car is dying. We're going to need to do something. And I kid you not, we got the car, and like five months later, Corbin had a permanent marker near the car. Guess what I did? I nearly freaked out. Dude, how dare you? What? Because there's ownership, right? Like, we just spent this, and you've got a permanent marker near the car. Not in the car, just near it. Like, don't even go there, right? There's an ownership, okay? One of the things that was really special this year, we finished Awana, and one of the praises I wanted to share with you uh, was we had our first parent donor. 
And Bruce know who, who knows who that is. I don't know if it's here or, or wherever. But the fact that somebody said, oh, we see what you're doing. And we want to take ownership of that. I mean, amen, right? I notice we take ownership of sports camp. And we can't be shocked, but we wonder why kids are like turning away from the faith. Well, they never had one to begin with because we endorsed things and took ownership of things that were not Christ-like. That's a fact. We can't be shocked that we've pushed the Lord out for years as a country. And it's like, man, I just can't believe we're here. Well, we also financially supported things. We took ownership of things that we probably shouldn't have. Okay, and so one of the things about not only giving and honoring to the Lord, it's he, he is worthy of it, but it also takes ownership of us and where we're going. Where's this ship going, right? And that's a big thing. That's very, very important. Then, then again, just bear with me here, okay? Well, not only are we honoring the Lord, we take ownership, but we want to get to the local church first, okay? Because that's what the Lord is, is asking, both Old Testament, New Testament. But then this is something I'm guilty of, okay? And, and so I just wanted to share with you, um, there's times where... I get it. There's too much bill at the end of the month, right? Uh oh, we're in trouble. We're gonna have we're gonna have to cut some corners. And I have there's been times I'm coming clean. I have not honored the Lord, and so I've tried to justify. I've tried to justify where the funds went. Most notably last summer, like we knew we were going to Korea. It's gonna cost some money. It's gonna cost some money, and so I'm not gonna be able to tithe this month because quote I'm going to be going on a mission trip. You guys see that? I justified it, right? I'm going on something spiritual. Did I honor the Lord in that justification? So I'm looking away now so nobody's judging me. <laughs> but it was, it was, my, it was my, my sin, right? I did not honor the Lord. And so remember, guys, those, there can be good spiritual things, right? Like, like camp, right? These things are important. These are good investments long term for the word of God. But did we honor the Lord with the first fruits to the local church? That's a, that's a big thing. Right? Because if all of a sudden I'm doing, hey, Korea is great, or, or worldwide missions is great, we could be given those things. Next thing you know, like, we don't have anything here. Right? So we have to be careful. Again, Old Testament, New Testament, mm -hmm. there's a clear, clear principle of giving to the Lord, honoring Him in the local church body. And you guys know this, right? You, you want to clean up where you eat, right? If, if we're feeding you the Word of God, I try to be deep, try not to pull any punches. We need, to, we need to support that, like in its most fundamental aspect. It's another way that we take ownership. Man, I'm being fed here. I want to continue to give to the Lord for that and, and for that ministry. And so that's how we honor the Lord. Now, as we, as we know that we're, we're honoring the Lord, I wanted to look here. If you, if you got your notes, very important today, okay? And Aaron, you're wrong. I'm going to be picking on you guys. We're going to read the first one, okay? But I've given you some verses because, again, we start to bounce around after chapter 3 in Proverbs. Proverbs is written by Solomon, most of it, 95%, right? And they are principles. They are principles. And today's principle is about money, but it's just a different form. It's, it's taking on a little bit. That's why I'm not as nervous, okay? Uh, but chapter 14, so let's, if you've got your Bible, I still, I think, I, I know I speak for Dell, but like we can never not be in our Bible too much, duh, right? But chapter 14 I did put them in your notes just so we could have some consistency as I look around at this principle today. But Aaron, can you read chapter 14, verse 4, that first one at the top of the notes there? Here we go. You got it, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where there's no ox in the man, uh, manger. No. Nope. The manger. Oh, manger. Yeah. It's clean with the abundant crops from the manger to the ox. Yeah. One more time, Aaron. Uh, where the where there is no ox in the mangers and where the abundant crops from the Okay. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this time. Lord, I, I do thank you for frankly the conviction uh, of are we honoring you? Are we honoring you with our finances? Uh, Father, I pray today that you would convict us uh, in this this uh, idea and principle of work ethic and, and tithing. Uh, and are they in line? And are they honoring to you? So, Father, give us wisdom as we look through uh, these amazing Proverbs. Father, be with us as a church. And we thank you. Lord, we thank you for just a long history of, of you providing financially uh, for many, many years. Lord, for provision to uh, have, have a, a safety net where we can, uh, we can be in prayer and, and discussing how we want uh, to, to move forward in the future because of a faithful uh, honoring of you. And so, Father, we again just thank you for this time. Be with us now as we look through your word in your name. Amen. Amen.
men. Well, last week, my wife's favorite verse is Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. So, Tanya, I don't know if she knows this, but my favorite proverb is, in fact, the first one up there. And you're like, what? You don't have a manger? You don't have an ox? How could this be Andrew's favorite proverb? Well, it just is because I, I like it. But if we look at it, this is very interesting. We've got an oxen. We've got a manger. We've got crops. Man, this is crazy. What is this passage talking about? Well, let's read it one more time. Where there's no oxen, the manger's clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of an ox. I'd love to ask right now what we think this means. But remember, these are principles. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious if we stay on the line, it obviously only applies to Michael and Deborah, right? They have a barn. They've got some cows. I do not. I have a slug bug, okay? And I think we all would agree the oxen would kill the slug bug, right? This, this passage doesn't uh, apply to any of us. No, obviously that's not true. Okay, but guys, I love this one because as you see on the screen there, if you want to see some results in your life, you're going to have to get dirty. If, you, if, if we as a church want to see lives change, you're going to have to have a dirty building sometimes. Are you guys with me? If you want to be something, whatever that is, you're going to have to get dirty. Again, back in the day, this is an agrarian society. Okay, they didn't work for Google. They didn't have a local mill, right? You'd be out on your farm, and if you didn't get an ox and you didn't plow your fields, are you going to have food? No, you are not. Your whole family's going to starve. You would have a clean manger. Woo! -hoo! But you'd be starving. So guess what? You should probably buy an ox, right? You're going to have to get dirty. Again, look on the screen there, the idea for abundant there, right? You have that revenue. That's the source of revenue. And guys, I don't know anything about oxen. I don't think about cows other than they stink and have four stomachs. But Tanya's brother-in-law happens to be a vet, and he works on a lot of cows, and he'll tell you that when it's harvest time and the start of plowing season, twice a year, you really need an ox because you need to... To, to get your, your straight straight lines to, to put out whatever produce you're going to do with the seeds. And then you're going to need to, to harvest it, as you see right there, right? They're plowing the field. You only need it twice a year, but you really need it twice a year. So you put up with your barn being smelly. You put up with the manure. Oh, man, you're willing to put up with a lot. Why? Because you know you need a crop. You need to survive. You need to have some kind of revenue service. I think I speak... For all of the moms here, okay, happy Mother's Day, right? We love you. But I also know every Thanksgiving and Christmas, you guys have this battle. I've got to cook all this food for Thanksgiving or Christmas. My kids and family are kind of driving me nuts right now, if I'm being honest. But then you realize, and I know, Rebecca, you'd rather have them all there for Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? You'd rather have the whole family there, so... I guess I'll have a dirty kitchen, a dirty, you know, we're going to work through the stove top. We're going to go through all that because you know what's long term is the blessing. You want your family there. You want your family there. And so, guys, we have so relevant for us today, right? Because we want something. We live in society today where Amazon Prime, baby, two-day shipping. If I don't get it, I want a refund, right? If I don't get something quick and easy, uh, I start to lose it, right? This proverb is very, very relevant to us today, is it not? Because we know if we don't get dirty, there's a problem, right? We'll have a clean house. We'll have a clean church. Most likely, you won't have any relationships, right? I've known some parents. I've known some churches, right? Like, they just are. We have to keep things so clean that we, we push people away, right? How many of us have a neat freak in our family? And you're like, you know what? It's almost like we're at Thanksgiving and we're on pins and needles because if we spill something or the kids spill something, we freak out. Well, guess what? You had a clean manger, but you're not going to have any relationships. It is absolutely crucial to have a healthy, strong ox. Man, that is going to help you with a large harvest. It's a large harvest. The better oxen usually equals and equates a larger harvest. It isn't just about more and more. It's about being productive. And to be productive, a lot of times you got to get dirty. Not ethically or sinfully dirty, but you got to get your hands dirty if you want to see some kind of change. And again, we see this a lot today. There are, again, uh, many times 
uh, churches, right? We, we, we don't have any ex coming to church. We don't have any ex mission trips or sponsors or whatever. Well, have we looked at have we looked at getting dirty? Have we looked at investing and, and figuring out and wrestling with and how we can get the crop that we want to see? A lot of times we want a clean manger. But clean manger usually this means there's not going to be a good harvest. And so all that to say we should probably feed the ox, right? We should probably get on that. Just kidding. Right? We gotta we, we, we can't be afraid to get dirty. And if we if we look down, look down to just chapter 14, verse 23. It's on the probably on the same page. Obviously, it's on your notes. Are you ready, Sammy? You gonna read this one? Number two, there on your notes. In all toil there is profit, but mere talk tends to only tends to only poverty. Yeah, only poverty. In all labor there's profit. But idle chatter, that's what I have in mind. I knew King James, but idle chatter leads to poverty. You guys know this one, right? That if you talk, 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 don't do any work, you're going to be having some, some poverty. You can, you can see on the screen that, that, that poverty is not what we think in America where somebody, you know, I mean, we got homeless in San Francisco and in and, and, and areas that are making 40000 from donations, people just going by. That's not necessarily poverty. What Solomon's talking about here in the Hebrew is the, the lack, the deficiency. All of a sudden, you don't have any food. All of a sudden, you don't have a place to be. Okay, so in all of the toil, all of that painful labor, there is profit. There is some kind of gain. We have our kids here today. Just probably should hear it from me. You're not going to need algebra when you get older. <sighs> I know. I don't like what? There's an app for that. I know some of your parents are like, I'm paying for this, man. Well, I hate to tell you this, guys. You may not use algebra, but the grind, the toiling through your homework is absolutely valuable, isn't it? It is absolutely valuable. You know this. We're all in different career fields. We've all had different life experiences. Maybe somebody's died of cancer. Maybe somebody's had a loved one get, get, get shot or assaulted. Like all of those things, as bad or as good as they are, we know that anything that's re resulting in that grind, that painful labor of life, there's profit. We may not like it, but there is profit to it. This is hard for students, isn't it, Aaron? You're like, because I hate doing homework. I hate it. I, hate, I can't stand it. Urgh, right? I could not stand Spanish. Couldn't stand Spanish, guys. Now I've been to Mexico five times. What's wrong with me? Right? I was getting a C. I needed to get a tutor. I'm never going to use this. And less than 20 years later, I've been to Mexico. Right? Boy, I really should have paid attention to those lessons. Urgh, what's wrong with me? Right? There is profit. Again, not necessarily financial, but there is gain in that. We can't be afraid to do hard work. Whatever your job is, whatever as a student, you can't be afraid of hard work. My soul sister over here, Rebecca, knows we don't like Albertsons. Now, we want you to shop at Albertsons, but as employees or former ex, like, hey, they, the Lord uses them to provide. Awesome. I, prov I paid for my college. But, man, I'm telling you right now, guys, I hated it. Do you know I probably said paper or plastic literally 10,000 times in four years. Paper or plastic. Hey, how you doing? I mean, it's just, it's just, oh, I remember after the first week, I was already jaded. That's right, you heard me correctly. After one week, I remember the worst shift is the four hour, four to eight, because it's the heat of the day, everybody's off work, and they're angry and ticked off, and you're also angry because in Sacramento, you got to go across asphalt in the heat. So I'm hating this, and I would do it, I'd be sweating, and I'd come in, man, that's probably taking at least 15 minutes. And you look up at the clock, it's been 38 seconds. Oh, my goodness. And people go like this. You know, the more you stand, right, the faster you go through. And that means the more revenue is <coughs> coming in for the company. All that to say, hated it, did not want to do the job. It did not in my brain. That toil was not worth it. But wouldn't you know, less than 20 years later, boy, self-checkout is through the roof. You guys hate that? Hate self-checkout. Did you know that something that's a benefit Rebecca can concur here. Did you know bananas is 4011? So when you put it on self-checkout, 4011, I still remember the code. Did you know cilantro, right? We've been to Mexico. We love cilantro in our, in our, in our food. But guess what? 4089. I don't ever have to ask someone what the produce codes are. Wouldn't you know it's self-checkout here. And I'll tell you another thing. Paper or plastic, 10,000 times. 
Wouldn't you know, I now have to bag my own groceries again. Yay, I'm just, I'm not bitter, guys, I'm not bitter. There's, there's joy, there, there's gain in everything. All that to say, when you're bagging your own groceries with two young children under six, I'm just telling you right now, this is true wisdom. It's paper, and you double bag that. You know what I'm saying? You double bag all the time when you're in self-checkout. When they ask if they can help, you politely say, I got this one today. I'm going to help you out to your car, okay? I'm going to help you out there because why? I toiled. I labored. I didn't think it was beneficial. It was beneficial. That means everything in the grind that you're going through, everything. Solomon says there's a principle here that when you work, even when you don't like it, there is going to be a benefit to that. Are we, are we listening today? Because a lot of times, we don't like that. I hate school, hate sitting there for eight hours. Some of you are like, I hate sitting right here for church, right? And all that to say this is so far, it's boiled down to one visual that we live in as a society. Right? That was easy. That was easy. We don't want to do the grind. I mean, if we, if, seriously, Amazon Prime, after two days, we're like, dude, I want a refund. Right? I just, I can't do this. I want the easy button. How many times kids complain about schoolwork? All our hands are raised, right? We were students at one time. We don't like it. We'd rather be doing nothing or chilling. And Solomon says, if you keep talking, guess what? It leads to poverty. It leads to a lack, a deficiency. You may have funds, but you'll be deficient in something else, and that would be character, would it not? Right? I believe the old adage, hard work produces character, right? Yeah. It builds character. That's what every dad ever said as he was out there with his kid mowing the yard, right? It's going to build character. Let's look at the next one. We've got that easy button. Solomon says there is no easy button. Chapter 12. Let's turn over there. Chapter 12. In my Bible, it's one page over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 11. Taylor, are we ready? Taylor's going to read it. One who works his land will have plenty of bread, but one who pursues worthless things lacks some. Let's, let's let that sink in. One more time, Taylor. One who works his land will have plenty of bread, but one who pursues worthless things lacks some. Okay, now again, obviously this doesn't apply to any of us because we don't have fields. I think, I think, Dale, you've got a couple acres. Why aren't you out there plowing the fields, right? No, I don't have fields, but obviously the verse, look at it. One who works, right? The sweat of your brow. When you work, the principle is very, very obvious here. When you work, at the end of that, at the bare minimum, even minimum wage here in America, at the end of that, you'll have food. Right? And in America, we really have food, right? Obesity is our number one problem. But notice the second part of the principle here, the proverb. But one who pursues what? Worthless things. Lacks sense. Oh, guys, this is so deep. Look at this word here. In the, in the uh, Hebrew, you see up at the screen there, it's, there's a worthlessness ethically to this. Meaning it's not providing any benefit or good to anyone, even you the person. And we have hobbies in America, like we can do all this, and it doesn't bless anything. It's a ethical, it's a character, just there's nothing beneficial at the end of this. You guys know this to be true. When you're working, and you're working hard, even if it's just to, to quote, get by, which we've all been in that boat, that at least has a blessing of hard work, paying off. You, you can get through anything, that grind of life. But someone that is intentionally pursuing Right? Running after things, worthless things, lacks sense. Guys, there's a frivolity here. There's the idea that there's energy expanded on things that don't even build your character. And we live in a society where young people are growing up with, with useless things. You know what number one is? Uh, I believe it's this, right? We scroll. That's the classic, right? That does not bless or benefit anybody. Hey, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, Andrew, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was working on a research paper. Not according to my stats last week. You know, X amount on the iPad, right? There's a lot of scrolling here. Those things don't bless anybody. In fact, they just make us more insecure, more angry, right? We just scroll. This is it. Like, that's not even exercise. You guys like that? Let's do that together, right? Uh -huh. Start the choir here, right? Okay? This, there's no benefit at all. Aaron, you know I love. I love high-powered pressure washer. There's certain video games that I love. But man, they like literally do nothing. We could go outside and do something. There's worthlessness to them. You guys know this in a practical sense. In a practical sense. Drinking and smoking. There's literal no benefit to you long term. 
Yeah, I'm not talking about like one glass of wine. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the incessant, like I'm going to pursue alcohol. I'm going to pursue this kind of smoking. I've got family members, right? It doesn't bless you at the end of it. You guys know this is practical. One who pursues worthless things lacks sense. You guys see it right up there. They, the, the, the inner person is missing in this area. They're not getting it. That's a scary thing. That's a scary thing. They're running after things that are worthless. One of the most practical things, guys, I mean this part of my heart. Should we be reading our Bible? Amen. Yeah. But guys, one of the most practical, beneficial things that helps everyone at every age, from our young children and up, is reading. Literally reading. Why? You're, first of all, you're reading the Word of God. So He's going to convict you. He, he's going to penetrate to our hearts. But you're also stimulating your mind in a literal act of using your brain. Reading is one of the most practical, beneficial things. But when we ignore those things, when we go after things that don't produce any value, you're lacking inner character. I'm going to share a story. And I'm going to try not to cry. But uh, when I was in Glide, this is like 09, somewhere 2010. Uh, I had a young man. He started living with me. Uh, ended up being in my wedding. Kind of like that symbolic son, right? Uh, and his dad, his dad left him when he was in the womb. Okay? So, so mom has four, four boys. And he's the fourth one. She's pregnant, about to have this, this young man. Uh, and husband leaves. And wouldn't you know, it's the classic story, right? Found the secretary and, you know, they're, they're going to live their lifelong happy dream. And he was never around. Never did anything. Okay? But his, his son, who stayed with me, he would go to see him for Christmas or the summer here and there. Not a lot, okay? And he came home, and one time he told me, hey, Andrew, I can, go to, I can go to this event or whatever. My dad gave me some money after, and I remember this, after he spent $1,000 on a magic card. Now, you guys know what I'm talking about, like the magic cards, right? It's a, it's a, it's a game, right? You play, guy spent $1,000 not spending time with his son. Not spending time on something that would maybe even bless us. I'm like, hey, let's do a race together. Let's go play softball on a team together. The guy spent money that kept him from his kid. And he didn't invest in his kid. Are you guys, are you guys with me? The relationship with your child is more important. And yet this person lacks sense, right? Lacks sense. We're spending our money on things. We're spending our time on worthless things. And so I have to ask today, when we, when we talk about honoring the Lord, when we talk about honoring the Lord with our finances, is our money going to worthless things right now? I've certainly been guilty, guys. Remember, we've, we, we all know and have seen marriages, right? They fight constantly over money. And a lot of times it's because a hobby is too expensive and it shouldn't be. But I mean, we've all seen someone's maybe the spender in the relationship. But again, every single thing we, we have in America can be turned into a worthless thing. We can abuse things. I ask one more time, is our, is our money, is your money going to worthless things? Guys, remember, I justify from 2000, this wasn't an exaggeration, from 15 to 17, Tanya can confirm, every other weekend I was out doing a race, half marathon or a marathon, and I justified it by saying, quote, I'm staying in shape, right? And then you look at the finances, like that's, you know, $70 a race, it's $100 to get a hotel, you've got gas, and you're like, dude, why are you spending all that money? Well, I'm staying in shape. That's a good thing. Is it? Yeah, I'm trying to justify it, right? Is it really? Because now, 2018, I have health issues because I've actually run too much. You idiot. You're not a Kenyan. Let it go, right? You're not going to the Olympics. We see this something good turned into something worthless, right? It ended up costing costing some health issues, right? So every single thing that we, we spend our money on, if we're not careful, can become worthless. Worthless, And so we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of that, that balance that we need to have. Let's look, let's look at the next one, chapter 13. So again, you'll probably, you'll probably turn one page again, just like I have in my, my Bible. 1311. Alex, you want to read it, buddy? That's okay, buddy. That's okay. Taylor, you want to read that one? He's got it. All right. Wealth Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, 
But whoever gathers it little by little will increase it. Now, again, if we were if we were not careful, right? If we weren't studying the scriptures, we'd pull a Joel Steen here and go like, obviously we just keep saving our checks, we'll be millionaires one day. And that's not what's occurring here, right? When with the idea, I love this. Well look at the word hastily. When, when you have that vein, that prideful idea that I'm going to work around the system, that I'm going to, quote, get rich quick, right? I'm going to avoid the grind because I'm going to pull this off. That's a pride, right? There's a pride there. And, and Solomon's saying when you have that prideful attitude, it's, it's going to be gone. It's going to dwindle. Why is it going to dwindle? Because you're going to constantly have to find other ways to... You know, cheat the system to work around it, okay? I think we all remember the classic late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, man, good old pyramid scheme, right? Ben, I've got the perfect air dryer. And if you could just find your friend after you give me a 1000 and then we find two friends, and then they all spend it, man, by the end of the week, we could be half a millionaires. I mean, it'd be awesome, right? We remember these weird, silly pyramid schemes. That's still going on. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but, but we also, I mean, we, guys, I've seen it. I've worked at Albertsons. I'm sure Rebecca can tell us stories. we got people, they'll spend their hard-earned money. I'm going to win the lotto this year. You're telling me there's a chance. It's point zero 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 nine one nine, right? Like, there's, there's just no, I mean, there's statistically a chance, but I'm going to try to avoid and get rich quick. I'm not going to work hard. I don't need to work hard. I'm going to work hard at working around working hard, right? I'll try to get out of it. And again, the principle here is that you're just going to have to keep doing that because you're getting rich quick. So you're going to try to keep doing that. It's never going to be enough. And then with that, our last one, let's turn. We do have to flip some more pages here. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. Oh man, we all love this one. I even got you a cool cool stick figure there that we're going to put up. We're going to put oh, our guy awesome. up here. Look at this, man. Hey, we're scrolling, right? We're scrolling. Yeah, it's just good times, right? Amanda, could you read it for us? Like an armed man, yeah, like an armed man. This is amazing. This is amazing because if you look on the on the screen there, you'll see in verse 33. Look at that one. Verse 33. You see the word little. Okay? It's used three times, and this is so profound. The idea, as you can see, oh, I only put a three. Okay, so what it what it's talking about is it's a few. Have you guys ever just had a few cookies at night? Oh man. 32. 32. <laughs> it started with one or two and led to 32. Right? Uh, your girls, uh, you know, McKinley came over and we're just going to have an Oreo. Just going to have an Oreo, right? They're gluten free. We got them specifically so they could come over, right? So proud they feel comfortable. Next thing you know, I'm throwing out a pack of Oreos because there is no pack of Oreos. <laughs> like, it just started with a few. It's just a little, guys. Right? So look at the verse. It's just a little sleep. I'm just, gonna, I'm just a little tired right now. It's just a little point. I'm just going to take a quick power. And you keep doing that and doing that and doing that. Maybe it's throughout the day. Maybe it's throughout the work week. Maybe it's on the weekends. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what happens? The poverty, that need comes on like a prowler. It's going to come on, guys. The metaphor here is it's going to come as quick as a guy who's scouting you out. He's going to see you're an easy grab because you're always sleeping, right? You're not on guard. You're chilling. And so poverty's going to come on there and take it. Just as easy as a thief would, because he knows you don't protect yourself. He knows your money is right there, and he can take it anytime he wants. Look at that on your notes there. The lazy man, the lazy man with his inordinate devotion to sleep, rather than what? Rather than work. He learns too late, thus coming to the inescapable poverty, just as a victim is overpowered by a robber. Laziness can lead to poverty. Laziness is not always the cause of poverty. That is so well said, right? No, So well said. The more you sleep, the more in need you end up being, right? All of a sudden, wow, I could have had a little extra cash, a little extra something, but I decided to take that nap here, 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 and by the end of the week, by the end of the month, it's added up, and that's less wages, and all of a sudden, things come on. 
Now, all of this is to say, as you look at the, at the bottom here, okay? Guys, if we flip to the last one, okay? It's about your work ethic, okay? So we're still talking about money, but we're talking about it from the, the effort that we put in to God providing for us. And so I want to ask a question here that I was wrestling with as we study this, this <laughs> huge principles, okay? Can we honor the Lord with our giving and our finances if our work ethic is trash? Hey, you don't know me. I clocked in every day on time this week. That's true. That's true. Thank goodness for that because I've been part of people showing up late all the time at, at, uh, at Albertsons. But, man, I've also known people, they showed up all the time on time, and they were some of the worst workers because they didn't have a work ethic. How many times have we seen somebody, right, I'm just going to take a quick five-minute smoke break, you know, at the mill or wherever, and the next thing you know, it's 35 minutes. It's like, uh, why didn't you just take a lunch, right? Or that you know somebody, they took their one-hour lunch or however long it is, next thing you know, it's three hours, and they say, yeah, I'll make up for it later. You keep adding those up, bad work ethic, and you're going to be in the boss's office getting fired, right? You know this, right? You're, we, we know this. It is a fact. It's a principle. And so I ask today, just because we're giving to the Lord, are we giving to the Lord with our work ethic? You know, he's given you that job. He's given us the, the provision to give back to him as a way to honor him. But can we honor him, honor him with those same finances if we have not had a good, godly work ethic? That's a tough one. And so when we look at that today, as we go to communion, maybe that's the Lord kind of pressing in on your heart, right? Lord, you're right. I've been wanting the easy button a lot, right? I've wanted it. I've been clicking it a little too much. Frankly, guys, that was easy. it gets addicting, right? It gets addicting because Corbin will be like, I did, the, I did my chores today. That was easy, right? I, I picked up my room today. Well, you can get addicted, and unfortunately, we get addicted to just having the easy life in America. And we don't want to work hard. And we don't want to, to we, we, get, we get annoyed with the grind. And so I ask one more time, can we honor the Lord if our work ethic is bad? No. Well, let's, <laughs> let's go ahead. Can we look at the, the, the last one there, okay? Uh, again, don't, don't go home and not do anything, okay? That's so important. Make sure you go home. Talk with your spouse. Are we spending time? Are we spending our money on worthless things that do not provide a benefit? Maybe some spending habits need to be changed. Not 